Hey everybody, Mr. W here. Today's lesson is on division and we're dividing decimal numbers through thousands. Decimal numbers are numbers that have a decimal point in them and thousands is a reference to the decimal place value thousands that we're working to today. We're only going to do two problems. The first problem will be without adding any zeros to our dividend. The second problem involves a few more steps where we will have to add zeros to make equivalent decimals. Okay, so let's start. We're going to divide problems with decimal numbers like any other whole number. Just don't forget to include your decimal point in your answer. Our steps are like always, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat, and we'll be doing it for each number that we have to bring down. So we're just going to be doing like a cycle of problems. We'll put that in the bottom corner. Our directions for our first problem, divide the number to the thousandths place value. Okay, so we'll start with the divide step. We start with the two, and ask yourself how many times can eight go into two without going over? That would be zero times because eight cannot go into two. So the zero we put at the top and let's add our decimal point right away. And we move on to the next digit, which is the zero in the tenths place value. Ask yourself how many times can eight go into two and zero tenths without going over? That would be two because eight times two, and that goes on top, is 16. The 16 goes underneath, but with the decimal it becomes 1 and 6 tenths. We're now ready to subtract. That would be 4 tenths, and our next step is to bring down the next digit, which is the 9. That gives us 49 hundredths. Now we start all over again with the divide step. Ask yourself how many times can 8 go into 49 hundredths without going over. That would be six times because eight times six, and the six goes on top, is equal to 48, but we convert that to 48 hundredths. We then subtract, that would be one hundredth, and we're ready to bring down the next digit, which is the three in the thousandths place value. That gives us 13 thousandths. We'll start all over again with our divide step. Ask yourself, how many times can eight go into 13 thousandths without going over? That would be one time because eight times one and the one goes at the top in the thousandths place value is equal to eight. The eight goes on the bottom, but remember it's going to be eight thousandths because of our place value. When you subtract, we will get five thousandths. However, we do not need to go any further. That is not a remainder, and we do not need to carry any more information because the direction said we're working to the thousandths place value. So our answer is 261 thousandths. So that's our first problem. Our second problem, we said that we will need to add zeros to make equivalent decimals. An example of when you will need to do that would be when you have fractions. For example, the fraction 5 sevenths. If you wanted to convert that into decimal form, how you would do that is to divide the numerator of 5 by the denominator of 7. Notice that our denominator of 7 is larger than our numerator. To illustrate that, Let's just say if you have five pizzas, okay? They're not the greatest pizzas, but you get the idea. And we have seven people, and we want to divide those evenly. Notice that two of the people don't have a whole pizza to themselves. So we're going to have to work with the five that we do have. And we would begin to cut those five into smaller pieces. When we do that, our answer is going to be less than one whole, which means we're going to start to get into our decimal place values. Keep in mind that five is a whole number, but five is equal to five and zero tenths, or five and 
hundredths, right, and five even into the thousands place value. Those are equivalent, and you are allowed to write those zeros in without changing the value of the number. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next problem. Our answer will be less than one whole. Directions divide the number to the thousands place value. We'll start with the five and ask yourself, how many times can seven go into five without going over? That would be zero times because just like we showed with the model, there's uh, you can't get seven into five, right? The zero goes at the top, add your decimal point. So now we would usually go over to the next digit and we're doing that here, but there's nothing there. But because five is a whole number, we can add a decimal point and zero tenths and it is still the same number, okay? Ask yourself, how many times can seven go into five and zero hundredths, or tenths, excuse me, without going over? That would be seven times because seven times seven, and the seven goes into tenths at the top, is 49, but with our decimal point, it would be four and nine tenths. We now subtract and get one tenth. But our direction said to go to the thousandths. So we go to the next place value to bring it down, but there's nothing there, but no problem. We just add a zero to make an equivalent uh, decimal, right? And the zero comes down and now we have 10 hundredths. We go to divide again. How many times can seven go into 10 hundredths without going over? That would be one time because seven times one and the one goes on the top in the hundredths is equal to seven. That seven becomes seven hundredths with our decimal point and our place values. We subtract the 10 hundredths minus seven hundredths is three hundredths, but we've got one more place value to bring down because we're working to the thousandths. Add your zero and bring it down and now we have 30 thousandths. We're going to divide again. Ask yourself, how many times does 7 go into 30 thousandths without going over? That would be 4 times because 7 times 4, the 4 goes at top in the thousandths, is equal to 28, but we express that as 28 thousandths. 30 minus 28 thousandths would be 2 thousandths, but we do not need to go any further because we're only working to the thousandths place value. Our final answer is 7 and 14 thousandths. If you made it this far, great job. Thanks for sticking it out. Keep working on your division skills, and we hope to see you on the next one.